Hi, in this video, we will discuss some of the most important patterns of electron movement in nucleophile and electrophile types of chemical reaction. It is really important that you can recognize and understand and be able to follow the arrows that we are about to go over because we will be using this and seeing this in all of the chemical reaction that we see in organic chemistry. So the first pattern is the nucleophile attack. And this pattern right here can be further broken into two. First, we can have a site that is serving it as a nucleophile, attacking a partially charged atom. Or we can also have a nucleophile attacking a partially part charged atom. So let's go over the differences between the two. So first, attacking a partially charged atom because that atom does not have an octet of electron. So for an example, here in this case right here, we can have a site, let's say a bromide, or anything that is negative, that make it a nucleophile. And that can come in and attack in something that is positive. So here is our electrophile, and here is our nucleophile. So in the course of this reaction right here, the nucleophile starting from the lone pair of electron on it. That will then donate electron into the carbon, the deposited. And please note that here in this case right here, this carbon right here do not have an octet of electron. So it has only six electron, it can, and therefore it can accept two more electron from the nucleophile. And as a consequence, we will then see a chemical bond is then formed between the bromine and the carbon. And in this case right here, the bromine will then become a neutral. So when it's negative and it donate electron, give electron away. In this case, it give one electron away to the carbon. So it will go from negative one to now neutral. And as, and as for the carbon, the carbon right now is positive. So as the electron move from the bromine to this carbon forming this bond, one electron is given to this carbon. So therefore, the, the charge of the carbon will change from being positive to now neutral. So in this case right here, we can see that there is a new covalent bond that it has just been formed between the carbon and the bromine. And again, so this is the nucleophile and this is the electrophile. So a bond is formed between a nucleophile and the electrophile. And this is called a nucleophilic attack. Now, we can also have nucleophilic attack where the attack happened on a partially positive charge atom. And that atom have an octet of electron. So when attacking an electrophilic carbon, there is already octet. And as the new bond being formed, one of the existing bond must be broken in order to restore the octet for the carbon again. So therefore, two arrows must be needed to avoid exceeding octet for the carbon. For an example, here in this case right here, we have a lone pair of electron on this oxygen, which again, this is a good size of nucleophile. And now we have seen already that this carbon right here is partially positive. So that is a good electrophile. So in the course of this reaction right here, the lone pair of electron from the oxygen is then donated or coming in to attack this carbon. And as this happened, this basically means that the new bond is formed between the oxygen and this carbon. And this will then cause this carbon right here to exceed its octet. And since carbon cannot exceed octet, we have to follow through by drawing another arrow where the weakest bond in this molecule, which is basically the pi bond here, it will be both broken, the electron is then donated to the oxygen. So that what happen whenever you come in to attack a carbon to carbon. As the new bond is being formed, the weakest bond, in this case, it will be the carbon and oxygen pi bond. Since pi bond are weaker than sigma bond. So therefore, if we have to break a bond to restore the octet of the carbon, it will be the pi bond that is broken. And the electron will then be given to the oxygen, send the oxygen in more electron negative. And follow through with this arrow, we'll be able to produce the following product.
and now the auction will then be coming negative so that will happen when we have a nucleophile attacking a carbon that already have an octet of electron we have to follow through with another arrow in order to restore the octet for the carbon again and here is also another example where we come in and attack on a carbon that is also positive but not a carbonyl. So here in this case, due to the difference in electronegativity between the carbon and the chlorine, this carbon is bearing a partial power charge. And again, the oxygen can serve as a nucleophile to come in and attack in this electrophilic carbon right here as follows. Now, so at this high is happening, then this will then cause this carbon right here to exceed its octet. And again, again, there's two hydrogen that we're not drawing out in here, but then there's two hydrogen in that. And so therefore, this carbon right now, is having an octet of electron. And as we move the lone pair electron from oxygen into this carbon, this carbon will now be exceeding octet. So it has to break a bond in order to restore its octet. So which bond will it break? So in this case right here, it will be the bond between the carbon and the chlorine and the reason why is that this bond right here it is the longer bond and it's the most polarized bond in this molecule and hopefully this is a good reminder to point out the importance of why we need to be able to determine bond strength so that way we can again see in a chemical reaction which bond will be broken and follow through with this arrow right here we will now have the following And there will be two hydrogen right here that we didn't draw out before. And now the chlorine will be broken up. And now as the chlorine is broken up, it will be taking an electron with it. So one of this pair lone pair of electron right here used to be the electron that make up the pi, the sigma bond between the carbon and the chlorine. So in the course of this reaction, the chlorine is gaining an electron. So therefore, this will then become in negative. And the oxygen is becoming positive. So in this case, I like this oxygen in neutral and it donates an electron to this carbon. So that's why it will now carry the partial positive charge or the fully positive charge. So again, anytime that we do an nucleophilic attack, we if we attack in an atom that is already octet, and this atom cannot exceed octet, we have to follow through with another arrow in order to liberate the octet for it again and the bond that we have to break will then be the weakest bond that this carbon is having versus when we attack a carbon that is do not have an octet of electron then we can we only need to draw one arrow so we're not exceeding octet for the carbon so next moving on to another pattern the loss of the leaving group the loss of the leaving group refer to the step where an atom serving as the leaving group is breaking off and taking the electron away with it. For an example, let's say here we have this species. So in this case right here, the loss of the leaving group step refer to the breaking of the bond between a carbon and that atom and now this atom breaks up and take the electron away from it so when we follow through with this a bond will then be broken when the carbon would now change from neutral to be in positive and as for the bromine as it breaks up it will take the electron with it and therefore they come in negative so in this case right here this bromine is serving as something that we call the leaving group and the breakage of this bond right here can also be referred to as a hydrolytic cleavage a hydrolytic cleavage refer to the breaking of a bond unevenly 
in which that the electron go to one atom or the other, but not sure between the two of them as to what is seen in the radical. So this is the loss of the Lieben group. And this step right here would only be feasible if the following are met. First, the Lieben group is stabilized with the electron, make it again. As the Lieben group breaks up, it takes the electron away from it, and the cell will then become negative or carrying the electron. So it would only happen if the electron are now stable on this Lieben group. And the second, the carboxylic cation produced is stable. So what we see in here in this case is that after we follow through with this step, this carbon would now become a would carry a positive charge, and this is called a carboxylic ion. And this step again would only happen if this carboxylic ion right here would be stable, because stability is really important in all of this. We wouldn't this step right here would not be favorable or feasible if these two species right here are not stable. And now the next pattern, proton transfer. So this is essentially an acid and base reaction right here. And to determine if step is feasible or not, we need to use the pKa to determine whether or not there will be an acid and base reaction. So acid and base reaction or this proton transfer step happen very very often in organic reaction and this is why that is very important that we can determine easily whether a proton transfer step would happen or not. For an example, so let's say we have here an alcohol and we take this alcohol and we treat this with HCl. So here in this case, the lone pair electron on the oxygen, this can serve as a nucleophile or also as a base, but it's a good electron donor. And here in this case right here, it is donating an electron to the partially positive hydrogen. And this is the reason why that we call this a base. Because, uh, and we, and because the atom except the electron is a hydrogen. So in this case, the lone pair electron is donated to the hydrogen because it is very very positively positive and if this happens this will then cause the hydrogen to exceed its maximum bonding so it has to break up this bond right here and the electron is then donated to the chlorine and follow through we will have this product right here And again, this step right here would only be feasible if, if we use pK and determine that this is this will happen right here. And in this case, so here is the acid and the pK of HCl, this is negative 7. And this one, this is about negative 2. So this is the conjugate acid and the pK on the conjugate acid is about negative 2. And we will then see that acid and base reaction will be favored to the side with the higher pKa. In this case right here, negative 2 would then be higher than negative 5. So this reaction right here will then be feasible. And the lastly, the one thing that we want to make sure to make correction for would be to use the reversible arrow. Make it acid and base reaction are reversible. So we're going to use the reversible error to make sure this is all accurate. And the next pattern, carbocat and rearrangement. So carbocat and rearrangement can happen through something that we call the one-two shift. So the one-two shift refer to the shift between an atom one and an atom two or two atoms that are adjacent to each other. So in this case right here, the positive charge would be switched between two carbon that are adjacent to each other. And please note that one three do not occur. And this shift right here would only happen if we can produce a more stable carbocation. And when it comes down to carbocation and the stability, 
the tertiary carbocations will be more stable than the secondary and the secondary carbocation is then more stable than the primary carbocation and why are tertiary more carbocation than primary and secondary this is something we will see in the next video but now to discuss this pattern right here we go ahead and assume that we have understood that these are the differences in stability of the carbocation and carbocation cannon rearrangement can happen through two methods first one is something we call the one two hydride shift so this is the shift of a methyl group between a carbon one and then the next carbon carbon two so again this is why we call this one two methyl shift and here's an example of it so let's say here we have a carbocation and in this case right here, what we have right now is a secondary carbocation. So can this carbocation right here rearrange to produce a more stable carbocation? So let's see what happened. So here in this case right here, the relative position between the carbocation and this carbon is that this is, let's say if this is carbon 1, this will then be carbon 2. So the methyl group from the carbon 2 can migrate where it breaks up and it moves its electron over. An electron comes in to attack this carbocation right here. And as a consequence, we will now have the following. So the methyl group would now locate on the carbon 1. So the methyl group from the carbon 2 have now migrated or shifted to the carbon 2. And that will then create a partial uh, fully part of charge on the carbon number two. So this step right here is called the one two metal shift, the shifting of the metal group between two carbon that are adjacent to each other. And now why would this step happen here in this case? This is because of the following. Starting out we have a secondary carbocation and after this shift happened we now have a tertiary carbocation and make it this is more stable. Therefore, this step right here is feasible. Now, instead of a 1-2 metal shift, we can also have a hydride shift as well, where the atom that is being shift or moving will then be a hydrogen rather than a metal group. For an example, let's say we have the fallen species. So here in this case right here, the hydrogen can also take up. So let's also label the carbon, let's say here carbon 1 and this is carbon 2. So the hydrogen from the carbon 2 migrate over. So basically it takes in the electron in this bond with it. And it come in to attack or donate this carbon right here to form a bond between this carbon and this hydrogen. And that basically means that this carbon right here is losing an electron. And following this arrow, we have the following. Now, in this case right here, this step right here is feasible because at the beginning, what we have is a secondary carbocation, and on the product, we have a tertiary carbocation, and make it this is more stable. Therefore, this step right here will then be feasible. So these are basically two ways how a carbocation cation can rearrange, either through a 1-2 methyl shift or the 1-2 hydride shift. Now we do not observe ethyl shift or propyl shift or any other shift or group that will be longer, only be methyl shift or hydride shift. And again, it can only shift between two adjacent atoms, but 1-3 or 1-4 shift do not occur but only one two shift now let's try some of the example right here will carbocation rearrangement happen in the following reaction state your reasoning and if yes draw the reaction mechanism and name each of the step if feasible so here in the first example right here what we have right now is a carbocation 
And this carbo cation right here, it is a tertiary carbo cation. And tertiary carbo cation, as we have seen already, are the most stable types of carbo cation. And much more stable than secondary, and much more stable than primary. So therefore, there's no need for this carbo cation to rearrange. And therefore, there will be no. And now let's try the example B. So here in B, what we have right now is a secondary carbocation. And now the question now is, can we move this either by through doing a metal shift or hydride shift to put this on a more stable carbocation? So here in this case right here, we see adjacent to this, there is a tertiary carbon right here. So if we were to then move a metal group from this carbon over, to this carbon down here, then this would then allow this to or make a more stable carbocation. So here in this case right here, we can see that yes, because this is secondary and adjacent to it, there is a tertiary carbon in which that if we were to do a 1,2 hydride shift, then that would then result in the following. And now this will then become a tertiary carbocation. And make it this is more stable than the secondary, so therefore this will then be visible. Now between metal shift and hydride shift, which of it would then be more favorable? And the answer, hydride shift is actually more favorable than metal shift. And in this case right here, if we were to do a metal shift, then that would not change anything, right? It will not lead to anything that will be new because we simply just convert this back to a secondary and now this will then become a tertiary, tertiary carbon right here. We will not produce anything new. Only with the hydride shift that we will be able to change from a secondary into a tertiary carbocation. And perhaps maybe let's draw out what happened had we done a 1,2 metal shift. So in this case, this is the 1,2 hydride shift. If we were to do a 1,2 methyl shift, it would be this methyl group that would be migrated. And the product that this produce would then be following. And this is exactly similar to the previous structure. So nothing new get produced from here. So therefore, in this case right here, the only step that is productive that we can see can produce in this reaction will be the 1,2 hydride shift. And now let's try in one of the examples down below. Draw the mechanism for the following reaction and name each of the steps that we can. So here in this case, it's important for us to do some of the analysis and see what's happening. So we have here, so by comparing the reactant and the product, we will then see that there is a chlorine that is being added to this carbon. And in order for this carbon, the chlorine to be added to this carbon right here. Right now, it will not be possible until this carbon somehow turn into a carbocation. So let's see what let's see what happened here. Now, so at the beginning, we can see that this is a strong acid, and this have this hydrogen right here that is very very partial positive to the point that it almost positive, make it this is strong acid. So in this case right here, we can then see that we have a double bond and this double bond right here rich in electron so essentially this can behave as a nucleophile or as a base when they donate electron to a hydrogen it is acting as a base versus when they donate electron to an atom other than hydrogen it will be a, a nucleophile so in this case right here we can see it will behave as a base send the electron acceptor here is a hydrogen so we then see this donate electron to this hydrogen, breaking up this bond between the hydrogen and the chlorine, and the electron is then donated to the chlorine. And now follow through, we have the following. So here in this case right here, this is something we need to be aware of. So what happening right now is right now the electron are shared between these two carbon. So one of this carbon right here will take the electron, will take both of the electron to form a bond with this hydrogen right here. If the carbon on top were to be the atom taking the electron, 
and form the bond with this hydrogen. We will create the carbon on the bottom will become a carbocation. Versus, if the carbon in the bottom were to be the atom of the carbon taking the electron and forming the bond with this hydrogen, the carbon on top will then become a carbocation. And in this case right here, it would make sense for the carbon on the bottom to take the electron and form a bond with this hydrogen. So that way, it can produce a carbocation right here. And now we can see this can then do a hydride shift to then produce a more stable carbocation. So in this case, we'll do both, we'll draw out both this reaction. So again, if the carbon on the bottom were to take the electron and form a bond to the hydrogen, this is what we would have. And now that the carbon top will be then become a carbocation. And of course we have our chloride floating around. And if the other step were to happen with the carbon on top, if form the bond to the hydrogen, we'll have the following. And now the carbon on the bottom will then become a carbocation. So these are the two species that essentially can get produced. And here in this case right here, the species on top will be more feasible or more favorable. And the reason why is <clears throat> this is adjacent to a tertiary carbon. So essentially it can rearrange, undergo carbocation rearrangement to stabilize the carbocation, whereas this carbon down below cannot do that. So therefore, this will then be the major product in this step. And then follow through. Once we produce this already, and we can see here we have a secondary carbocation, and it can rearrange by doing a 1-2 hydride shift. So this will then donate electron in, come into attack here, and now we have the following. And now we have a tertiary carbocation. And once we form this tertiary carbocation already, the chloride that is rich in electron can now take an electron and do an nucleophilic attack coming in to attack this carbon right here. And that's what produced this product on top. So this is the nucleophilic attack. So that will be the name of this step. And this step over here, this is the 1, 2 hydride shift. And the step from the very first step, this is called the basic attack. It is not a nucleophilic attack because technically it is not attacking a carbon. Had this attack a carbon, that would be a nucleophilic attack. But in this case, this is attacking a proton. We call this the basic attack.